<laughs> Hello. So, Cam, what brings you out here today? Oh, we're out here to play some pond hockey up here in Meredith as part of the Pond Hockey Classic. It's a great cold winter day to uh, really participate in some what I, I would consider a great part of New England culture, getting out on the, on the lake and playing some hockey. You know, if I didn't come from a family with pond hockey as part of its fabric, I would have invented it. It's just too good. Here's my uncle, and here's my grandmother, cripping my uncle. Some decades later, it was me, my brother, and all our friends down at the swamp that my dad let fill with rainwater. We'd have classic games that would go into the night. We knew what winter was for. So when Cam Wake, ice core scientist at the University of New Hampshire, told me that he was going to be playing at the New England Pond Hockey Classic on Lake Winnipesaukee and would speak to us about the connection to climate change, I didn't need any convincing. The only hard part was watching as everybody else got to play. One of the things that defines us as New Englanders is really uh, the weather and the climate. People that were brought up here expect that the ice was going to freeze in winter and they'd be out there playing pond hockey with me or they'd be out skiing or snowmobiling. You can see here there's lots of bob houses, they'd be out ice fishing. And there's a whole economy that's been uh, developed around sort of winter uh, in New England. And what we've seen over the course of the past few decades is that we're, we're getting uh, winters that are warmer, they end rather abruptly, and we have spring coming in really quickly. We're having winters that start much later than, uh, than, than they used to. Chances of a white Christmas are much lower now uh, than they used to be. We also know one of the great things about New England weather, as Mark Twain put it, is the dazzling uncertainty of it. This winter happens to be a really snowy uh, winter and actually one that is not inconsistent with our understanding of a world warmed by greenhouse gases. When we warm up, the atmosphere has the potential to hold much more moisture, and therefore that moisture at some point will come down, and it results in bigger uh, precipitation events. And that's part of what we're seeing this year. More moisture in the atmosphere, bigger storms, resulting in uh, bigger snowfall here uh, across New England. So one of the uh, indicators of climate change across New England that's been really useful for us to track changes is ice out dates on lakes across the entire region. So people have been keeping records here on Lake Winnipesaukee for well over a century on the dates that the ice leaves in the spring. And what we found over the last century is that date is occurring earlier and earlier in the season, meaning that the ice stays on uh, a shorter period of time and, and leaves earlier. The climate system really has a lot of key, what we call tipping points. So think about the climate system not as a dimmer switch uh, on a light, but actually as a switch that, that turns it off and on. When we look at our paleoclimate records, that's records of past climate change, we see that there's been dramatic change in these systems that has led to dramatic climate change, you know, in the order of less than a decade and sometimes two to three years. And unfortunately, we don't know exactly what drives all of those tipping points. And so it's going to be really important for humanity not to push the climate system over one of these key tipping points that then ends up in dramatic climate change that will be very difficult for humanity to uh, adapt to and deal with. As climate changes, this notion of sort of small, gradual change, one of those key tipping points is one we could see right here. You know, what happens if Lake Winnipesaukee doesn't freeze in the future? Yeah. What happens to, you know, those, the, the people that, that have been brought up and, and are grounded in their communities where you go ice fishing and you go out with your kids and, uh, and play hockey and you go cross-country skiing or you go snowmobiling? So one of those tipping points could in fact be the ice doesn't come in or only comes in for very short periods of time and therefore becomes very dangerous so you can't go out on it. So there's tipping points all over the climate system, and one of them, you know, may be really relevant for really what is a key part of New England culture, which is getting out with your family on a beautiful winter day. Yeah. So far, we're still ahead. So, you know, if you think, where else do you get a thousand men out on a Friday morning at eight o'clock in the morning out doing physical activity? You know, that doesn't happen a lot. And I think it really speaks to the importance of outdoor recreation in snow and in ice to understand that our culture in New England is fundamentally integrated with the weather and the climate that we experience, as well as the topography. It's really part of the sense of place. <laughs> <laughs>